photograph each section of this tread. Before I do the exemplar, I want to photograph it. In order to do that, I'm going to have to break this into sections rather than just randomly taking photos. If we do find something in our exemplar, we need to be able to relate it back to where it was on the tire, and I need to know that if I'm looking for a particular wear spot, that it was in a particular area as opposed to looking at the whole tire. What I'm going to do is before I turn the tire, I'm going to look for what's called a tire wear indicator. On tires, they actually build a raised portion of rubber in the tread. When we look down the tread, we can see the grooves that are in here. And if we get a closer look, especially with a flashlight, and we look along the tread, we will see that there are raised little portions, they're about an eighth of an inch high, inside each of those, those tread lug areas. When your tire gets down to that amount of tread that's left, you have to replace the tire because there just isn't much left. That shows you that it's time to replace it. It's kind of like the old days where they'd say, take a penny and put it in. If you can see Lincoln's head, you know, his whole head, that there's not much tread left, that's what those are for. To be able to find those on the sidewall of the tire, lined up pretty close, will be what's called a tread wear indicator. In this case, it's a little pointed triangle. Most tires, most manufacturers use a little triangle, and where that is, there's one on each side, that's where your indicator will be. Other manufacturers use different indicators. On the, the vehicle I have here, they have the letters TWI, tread wear indicator. Depending on the tire you have, you may have anywhere from five to nine or 10 indicators on the tire. So when I take a look and I try to find those. Wherever I find one, I'm going to take a piece of chalk and soft playground chalk and mark it on the sidewall. Then I come along and I look for the next one and I would mark that. And I would continue to do this around the whole tire. Once I've got that, I've got it broken into some decent segments at that point. Now I need to know which segment is which. So I'm going to mark some numbers on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can do it one of two ways. I can mark it with the numbers up at the top, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or if I know the car is rolling this way, I could do it backwards so that I'm doing it sequentially. The problem is when I lower the car, I'm going to be working down in this area. When I'm trying to read the numbers, they're going to be upside down. So what I'll normally do is I'll mark it down here, number one, two, three, and so on. After I do that, it ends up looking kind of like this. So I've got my numbers here. I'll just darken up this, this wear indicator here. And I've got another one right here. So you can see I've got numbers one, two, three, four, five, and so on. This way, when I drop my tire down and drop it onto number one, as I roll forward, I can look right in front of myself and mark it rather than having these numbers upside down. Knowing that when I get to six, I've got a six and not a nine. This tire happens to have nine segments. Some of the larger tires I've seen only have five. Whatever you have just happens to be what that manufacturer uses.